Has the startup visa program changed? What's all this talk about the new instructions or policies or changes to the Canadian startup visa program? Calm down folks, the program has not changed. Only the startup visa work permit application guidelines and instructions have been updated back in May of this year. Today we're gonna go over all the key steps and how to apply for your startup visa work permit and best practices. This video is not meant for beginners who have never done any type of immigration application, but rather for intermediate to advanced users. As usual, don't expect less than the raw truth and nothing but the truth. Hello, my name is Reza and I work with the Ingwe immigration team helping applicants move across borders. Whether it's for yourself, your kids, your business, or all of the above, we do make it happen. Let me make this clear. I'm not an actual full-time YouTuber, but I'm working hands-on with our licensed team here in Canada, working on actual applications and communicating with the immigration departments, both overseas and inland, on a daily basis, representing our clients. These videos are made for the purpose of sharing our hands-on immigration knowledge with our worldwide audience. And of course, if you're thinking about immigrating, we're here to help. Get a free email assessment by filling out the form down below or reach out to us directly if you are an active immigration practitioner. Here we go. These are the key steps you need to take for a successful Canadian startup visa work permit application. Before you start, this is what you need in terms of functionality and eligibility. A valid letter of support from a designated organization for the startup visa program stating that you're an essential member. All co-founders of the startup should already have applied for their startup visa permit residencies through the online IRCC portal and have proof of this. Even if you don't have a temporary or permanent file number yet from IRCC, you can take screenshots of the online PR application submission and include these in your explanation letter as screenshot with your work permit application. You will need an incorporated company inside Canada. This is required to issue yourself a job offer for the LMI exempt work permit for the startup visa program. You will need a proof of minimum settlement funds for a total of 52 weeks duration of your work permit, depending on your family size. You will need proof of investment funds to start and run your startup inside Canada. Your startup visa eligibility documents are required as well, such as language exam, proof of your upfront medical examination, and what I suggest is sections of your business plan which indicate the amount of investment you're planning to do in the startup and the number of people you're planning to hire, sort of like projections. You should pay all the IRCC and Service Canada fees for your work permit application. And last, but definitely not least, answering all of IRCC's questions on why it's urgent for you to enter Canada as a startup visa business co-founder. We call this the statement of purpose, similar to how a study plan for study permits is used. And finally, answering the question on what the significant benefit is for Canada to let you in on a work permit to work on your startup business. The fees you need to pay for your startup visa work permit application include the following. Your closed work permit application fee of 155 Canadian dollars for the main applicant or co-founder. The employer compliance fee of 200 $130, which is paid to Service Canada. If you refuse once, you need to pay it again for each time you apply. Your biometric fee, which is different from your PR application biometric fee of $85 per person. If your dependent family members are joining you, then you will also need to pay $255 for your spouse or common law's open work permit and $150 for your dependent child study permit or $100 if they're not yet at the age to attend school. All dependent family members over the age of 14 or more also need to take their biometrics to enter Canada with their temporary status. You can pay a total of $170 for your biometrics for a family package if you're three or more persons. Now that we've covered the fees, let's look at your company incorporation and employer compliance fee steps in more detail. An incorporation of either a federal or a provincial business is mandatory to be able to issue yourself an LMI exempt job offer and pay the employer compliance fee. To incorporate federally in Canada, you need a Canadian director. But if you don't have a Canadian director, you can incorporate a provincial company without a Canadian director. This is possible in Ontario, 
Alberta, BC, and Nova Scotia. We provide this service for our clients at cost, so they don't pay more than approximately $690, as an example, in the province of Ontario. When anyone incorporates in Canada, a CRA business number is automatically mailed to the local address inside Canada, which was included in the original registration process. With this CRA business number, you can go to the Service Canada Employee Compliance Portal and register your business for an account. After you've created an account, you can apply for an LMI exemption code using this portal for your business and pay the $230 online. You enter the details of the position you're offering online to yourself with NOC code 88888. Quick job description, a wage, and LMI exemption codes for which you're applying. Within a few minutes or an hour max, you'll receive an email from Service Canada with the numbers starting with the letter A and a sequence of numbers, which is the LMI exempt code you will be using in your startup visa work permit application form IMM1295E. Let's say you incorporated a company in Canada or somebody else incorporated your business in Saika, but you never received the CR business number, or at least you didn't have access to the letter that was sent to the registered address of your business. If this is the case, don't worry. You can skip the online portal and just fill out the IRCC form IMM5802E. When you take this option, then in the work permit application, in the LMI exam field, you will enter the LMI exam code A9999999. After you pick the category exemption from labor market impact assessment in the details of the intended work in Canada on the form. Voila, you're done this step. Let's move on. Why is it urgent for you as a co-founder or co-founders to enter Canada before a decision on your final startup visa PR application is made? You won't hear about this anywhere else online. So pay close attention as this is our secret recipe for our success here at Ingway Immigration. You can either have your legal representative include this in their legal submission letter or you can include a cover page in your own application if you're applying for yourself. The statement of purpose should address the following questions. Legitimacy of the startup business in Canada. This is where you put the history of the startup business. A brief about the startup business, a short synopsis of what it does or supposed to do, how it's innovative and how it's going to change the world. Other details you can include besides your company profile, history, and when and where it was incorporated and any interesting facts about your startup that can help shed some light on it. Number two, what has been completed so far by the startup business? In this section, you can include the description of your key startup business milestones, including screenshots, links, and references to supporting documents for these claims. You do not want to state anything for which you do not have proper supporting documentation because anyone can claim they did a lot of work, but if there's no proof, the RCC officer can ignore all your claims. Number three, why is it urgent for the founder to enter Canada to continue working on this startup business? This is where you include your detailed 12 month roadmap of what you're planning to implement in Canada on arrival for your startup business. It should be detailed, realistic, and not too long winded or vague. It can be in point form and should have supporting documentation and or screenshots. You can refer to the next section, which we'll cover now, which will validate each of these points you have included under the specific question. This is the section where the IRCC officers will decide on whether your claims are all legit on why you want to come to Canada with a work permit. In this section, you can include copies of communication and invitations with stakeholders, partners, academic research institutions, vendors, events, potential customers in Canada, local chambers of commerce in the region where you want to set up, agreements signed or about to be signed with accounting firms, HR firms for your hiring, proof of any sales or revenues potentially from inside Canada. Should also include screenshots, supporting documentation, correspondences, confirmation letters and links all inside Canada contacts. Number five, what is the significant benefit factor for Canada for the founder to enter with a work permit before the PR is approved? A work permit may be issued under section 200 to a foreign national who intends to perform work that would create or maintain significant social, cultural, or economic benefits or opportunities for Canadian citizens or permanent residents. In order to prove the significant benefit, you need to see if your startup will be covering social, cultural, or economic benefits or a combination. As an example, you can include an explanation of job creation, critical nature of the industry and fast-paced change, 
priorities and initiatives by the provinces in Canada or the federal government in this specific field related to your startup, which means that it can help those pain points that the government has identified as major challenges for the country. As per the suggestions of one of our YouTube audience members, we're actually going to release a dedicated video just for this significant benefit factor in July of 2023. Keep this in mind about the significant benefit factor for your startup visa work permit. If you're claiming something, make sure you have evidence-based sources and or supporting documentation. Number six, why and how is the applicant a subject matter expert? If you're in no way related to the industry or have any previous experience or education related to this field, they're gonna refuse you easily. You will need to refer to your supporting documentation in this section regarding your education credentials, any specific training or certification for this industry or activity, perhaps any awards or industry recognitions you've received, any media coverage validating you as a subject matter expert. Be creative and have validation of your claims. Remember that IRCC officers are not subject matter experts for this specific startup or its related industry, but they wanna make sure you are. Number seven, availability of funds by work permit applicants to invest in the business and support themselves while inside Canada with their family for a minimum of one year. In this section, you will include financial information, liquid assets, and any income for the applicant or co-founders with supporting documentation to prove that they can invest in the business inside Canada and meet the 52-week LICO requirements as per the Canadian government website. The LICO is the minimum settlement funds you need as a co-founder to move to Canada on a work permit, and it depends on your family size. As an example, a family of two would require a minimum of $34,254 for one year, and a family of three would require a minimum amount of $42,111 for the year of 2023. Refer to the table we're gonna post for this video and article on our website for the detailed numbers regarding your family size. The key is that your minimum settlement funds are separate from your investment funds for the startup. They cannot overlap and you need to prove both separately. Otherwise, it can be grounds for refusal. For the proof of investment funds for your startup, you can also include external investments and successful fundraising accomplishments for the business as well. And remember, these funds should be unencumbered liquid funds. However, minimum settlement funds cannot be substituted with external sources or even other co-founders. I hope you paid close attention to the statement of entrepreneurial purpose in this video for your startup visa application and all the other details we went over. This video is getting way too long and I've got to go now as I've got multiple work permit applications to process this week. Whether you're a DIY kind of person who wants to do it themselves or you want to hire a legal representative, this guide can help you make proper decisions on how to apply. And of course, not to promote myself or my office, this is what we do day in and day out. We live and breathe startup visa PR and work permit applications. And remember, immigration consultants thrive and profit from successful immigration applications. And immigration lawyers thrive and profit from refusals that need to be taken to federal court. Hint, hint. Reach out to us if you're somebody who's looking to apply for themselves or even if you're an immigration agent or a practitioner who's seeking to outsource their startup visa work permit or PR work. We're here to help no matter who you are and where you're from. If you're thinking about immigrating, whether permanently or temporarily, you're at the right place. I can guarantee only one point. You will know what to expect, the entire process clearly laid out for you, and all the risks identified, including costs. If you're looking for results in your immigration plans, that's our expertise. No surprises, just results. Our team speaks over nine languages, and we help applicants from over 49 different countries during their immigration process, and this list is growing every day. Click the link below this video and get a free email assessment for eligible applicants. If you're ready to apply and you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me or one of my immigration team members at Ingwe, you can also book a session directly using the consultation link down below this description of this video. And of course, if you have questions, remember, we're here weekly live on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram every Thursday at 11 a.m. North America Eastern Standard Time, where we answer all of your immigration questions for free on the spot. See you next Thursday.